Hey everyone, um, hello, I'm Nick, and uh, today we're gonna do a Hitchhiker's Guide to Reason React. Um, who is excited about that? Woo! Woo! Yay! Okay, that's cool. Um, okay, first of all, most important lesson, don't panic. Um, who of you um, knows what reason is? Okay. That's very good. Um, who of you uh, has written actual reason code? OK, that's last people. So for the rest of you, don't panic. Um, I'm going to use the reason syntax. Um, but um, yeah, if you have any like questions, just shout at me. Um, I'd rather have this a more interactive session than um, me front loading with information. So if in doubt, don't panic, just ask, and we're going to walk through it and explain it. Um, so first of all, uh, reason why. Why do we need this? A um, couple of questions to the audience to clarify this. Who of you wants your, um, your computer to analyze your code before you run it and tell you all what's wrong about it? That's pretty cool. Um, who of you likes static type systems? OK. Who of you? <laughs> actually uses TypeScript or Flow in his project that you're working on right now? I, I don't. OK, that's half of it. So why? Because it's freaking broken most of the time. Who, or who of you uses an any type, has anywhere in his code base an any type? Who has? Who has? Who has? Oh, come on. Who the rest of you is lying. I know it. <laughs> um, all right. So. Um, Reason, the idea of reason is to have a 100% uh, um, uh, type coverage system. Uh, so it's always like, oops, converge. Um, I think converge should be coverage, but um, don't worry about that. Um, but the best part about it is you don't have to type it out all the time because there's a really good in type inference, systems, uh, inference system. What this means is, you actually like reason, the compiler is trying really, really hard um, to help you um, automatically determine the correct type. That means you can, in a lot of places, leave out the type completely, and reason will actually figure out like yes, or the compiler will figure out like yes, I can actually figure out what you exactly mean. And if it can, they will exactly tell you um, what's wrong about it. We're going to see this in action a bit late. Um, there's no null and uh, or undefined exceptions. So null pointer is in a pure reason program is not a thing. Um, and an anecdote to that is um, Sir Tony Hoare, um, who actually invented the null pointer um, in 1965 or like something like that. No, later. Um, he he calls this in a talk like uh, uh, years later. He called it the billion dollar mistake that he made back then. Because, um, and he, he said like, he was thinking about it and he introduced null um, because it was so easy to implement. But in hindsight, he realized like it was a really, really problematic mistake because a lot of bugs actually uh, come from this, um, uh, from uh, null pointer um, exceptions. And yeah, immutability by default. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan, especially working with larger code bases um, and larger teams more and more. Then I realized like, this is really, really helpful if you know exactly like this is not going to change. Um, and I can rely on that instead of somebody somewhere in the code base actually changing a variable you have. All right. And really, really, um, for me, the best part is variance and pattern matching. I'm going to give you a live demo of that. Um, in a bit. Okay, um, before we actually dive into it, um, there's reason, that's the language, or that's actually the syntax, because under the hood, um, it's all the OCaml tool chain. Um, then one thing you should know about is BuckleScript. BuckleScript is, the, is a compiler or a platform which we use to actually compile reason code to JavaScript or OCaml. Uh, you, can, you can do it with both. Um, and then there's Reason React. And Reason React is why we are here. Um, so let's dive right into it. Um, Reason React um, is a mapper that 
not only directly maps um, to JavaScript, but it does things a little bit differently. So I thought, like, let's get started right away and look into um, how things work with Reason React. So first, and I think here I'm going to go right into um, our first example. Um, three, let's toggle it, then we see it better. Can everybody read this? Is this good enough? Cool. Perfect. So in Reason React, um, the first thing we do is we have Reason React available. We don't import it. Um, the, this is possible uh, because we have in bucket script defined that Reason React is a dependency and it's part of our project. Um, and then you have it globally available everywhere. Um, that's because of the module system. In, um, in OCaml or Reason, Modules are globally available, so you don't have to import them from anywhere. Um, that's also, um, and this file as well, be, um, automatically becomes a module. That means um, you have this file available everywhere as a module in a code base. And that's actually when we look in the, in the, index, um, in the index module, where we use React DOM to render the app to, to the root ID. Um, you can see we don't import app one here. It's actually globally available. This has also the gotcha uh, that you should be aware of. You can't, in the whole code base, you can't have um, a file name or a reason file with the exact same module twice. It's really important because if you probably will run into this. Um, but then, um, so we take a component, um, and then what's really important for this module um, there will be a React component, is that you have a, a, a let binding of a make function. So we basically uh, define here how our component looks like. Um, and it's a function, same as like a stateless function component in, in React. It gets children. Um, in this case, I put an underscore because we don't use children. Um, you can do this as well, or you could, it's just a parameter. Um, this works as well. Um, but same as with in JavaScript, um, we can do this. Um, I hope this uh, syntax looks pretty familiar to you because that's actually the, uh, one of the main goals of um, Reason to be really appealing to uh, JavaScript developers. So we get the children here, then we spread out the component. Um, that's a, a thing that we have to do. Uh, I explain a bit in a bit why we have to do this, and then we define a render, something you do in, in a normal Reason React component as well. Um, we, we have a render property, and we basically assign a function to it, um, and we have JSX in re Reason available. Um, that's pretty cool. And then you can't do this directly. Um, that's um, that, that's really important because that, that will trip you up in the beginning. Uh, um, you have to explicitly, because it's a, a strong type system, um, um, it has to be um, a React element. Um, and basically here, we clearly define string is converted to an element um, for the type system to understand, like, hey, this is, um, this is a thing. Uh, you can do um, nice things, which we do in our, our code base. We basically um, give it an alias, um, STE, um, and then you could do um, this here, which makes it a bit nicer and shorter. But that's um, coming from, from JavaScript, that might be something if you like, why do you need this? But that's for the type system, and um, yeah. Important to know. All right, so far so good. So if we render this now, um, we actually see the hello world. It's inside a diff. Um, pretty straightforward, nothing special. Um, so far so good. Any questions about this one? Okay, cool. So basically what we did is a simple stateless component, hello world. Um, let's move on to to the next thing, the next component that is available, and that's the uh, reducer component. Yes, reducer component. That's not a thing in React. Um, the React team is thinking about it, um, if you talk to them, but they're like, they're not sure. Um, and I, 
I hope after the next five to ten minutes, you know why it's like, could be a good idea, but well, not really. Um, or maybe, I, I don't know, it's hard to say. Um, so let's switch to our app two here. And there we have a reducer component, um, app two. No, why are you, okay. App two is gone. <laughs> that's bad. Um, that's indeed bad. Should we write it from scratch? Uh, we could, yeah. Let me check if it's in the. Um, <laughs> it would make things a bit easier. Um, was it here? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, we can write it from scratch. Ah, there. Um, dum dum dum. App two was removed. Let's do app two. Cool. Uh, so here we have app two, um, never gone missing. Um, I hope everything still works. No. Uh, well, it can uh, be f what? Found. Uh, um, let's do a uh, clean and then uh, yarn start. Booyah. Um, so that's also one thing. Sometimes it drips up because there are existing JavaScript files. We are still early, um, so the tooling is getting better, but this is one gotcha that, that we sometimes run into um, that we have to clean out all the compiled JavaScript files. All right, so app two, um, it's still there, yes, that's cool, is a little application um, that does magically, it's a counter. It's a really good example. Um, you can count up, but you also can reset. So, um, it's not that long, 27 lines, um, but there's a lot of stuff in there that you might not be familiar with. So. Um, let's start with the first line, which is we define a type state. Um, and to actually give you an understanding what this means, um, I'm going to use the, the reason wrapper R top here. So this comes automatically if you, if you install the um, reason CLI tools. And you can do simple things, like you can um, basically run um, any kind of reason code. Um, but here we had uh, something. We defined a type state. Um, and that's something special about reason, because um, this is where when we define a, a record, which we mostly familiar with, like, similar to an object in JavaScript. Um, but in this case, um, we cannot dynamically create things. Like, for example, I can't do this in reason um, because it's a strong uh, uh, type system. So we cannot say uh, name is uh, Franz. Uh, doesn't work because the record field doesn't exist. But what we can do is we can, for example, define um, a type state. And then we can say um, count. Uh, actually, let, let's do. Um, we bind it to uh, my state, and then we say that's of type state, um, and then we do uh, count that we start at zero. Um, pretty straightforward. What you can do, and that's where type inference comes in, and that's the really cool part is, um, you can completely leave out the type declaration. Because reason, in the current scope of this, in this case, like it's not a module, but it's the, the wrapper, it knows there is um, this type um, state. And whenever you, whatever you create here, it only matches to that. So it assumes, basically, hey, it must be of type state. And if, if not, then uh, make sure you explicitly declare it. Um, and what you can do now, for example, is if we define another type 
um, name, which is of type string. And here we say that's a person. Actually, we give, it, we give the, an age as well, is an integer. So we have a person. And if I now um, create Tim, I can say um, Tim's name is Tim, obviously. And his age is, let's say, he's 52. And then you can see, automatically, it figured out, well, when it has a name and an age, it can't be of type state. It must be a person. That's type inference. That's pretty cool. So um, records, these, these are records. Um, and basically, when you define a state for a uh, reducer component, go ahead. What do you mean? So, so the, the oh, oh yeah, yeah, we we can. Yeah, yeah. Let's try it. That's always the best. Um, let's say we have Tim here, and we give Tim just a count. Or Tim is of type uh, person, and we give Tim um, just a count, which shouldn't be possible. Boom! It will tell you with. Um, here that this is actually wrong because the field count does not belong to the type person. Um, <coughs> what will happen is like, I mean, this is the wrapper. What will happen with your, if you have this in, in your buckle script uh, project uh, or any other com uh, OCaml or Reason compiler, um, it will actually not compile. So because this is a compile time error. Yeah, absolutely. This is a, a compile time error and will tell you like you can't do this. Um, there's two levels of, of errors, or basically you have errors and warnings. Um, errors are, are like things where it, it tells you exactly like this is absolutely not possible. But there's also things like warnings, which we'll see a bit later, where it tells you like you do okay. I mean, this is possible, but well, maybe you can do better. Um, yeah. So uh, how good is the stack trace of, of these errors? Uh, depends. So Yeah. I'm trying to say something that can't be done. Yeah. He's able to tell me. Yeah. 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 That's that's pretty good. What happens if you later on add a state B, which is also counting things? Um, let's do this. Um, so here we have a type. Um, uh, what B? Okay, whatever. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Oh. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, so here we, ha so we, ha here we have B. Um, we still have state available because it's in the same context. But if I now do um, uh, this here, it will always refer, like the type inference will always refer to the latest um, possible, uh, latest uh, um, matching declaration that it can find up. Yes, you can do this. So, but what you can do is, uh, my next state is if you, if you have two exact matching um, uh, um, records um, or types in the, in the, in the state, uh, in, your, in your scope, um, then you can explicitly def um, define it. And then you can still have um, the more available. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. That that's another one. Yeah. So you could do um, state dot um, ten. Is it like this? No. No, it should be in static structure, but I'm not sure if it's supported in the regulation. Yeah, I, I think it is, but I, I I forgot how how the the exact syntax is. Yeah. yeah never mind. Um, cool. Yeah. Uh, no, you can't. So it's not like that. It's not structural. It's actually, what was, Raphael, help me out here. What was, there's structural typing and what was the other one? Nominal. Nominal, yes. Yeah, yeah. So 
as far as I understood, it's nominal typing, um, so it doesn't match, which has its ups and downs. I don't know. I'm not. Yeah, but, but it is nominal typing, huh? That's cool. Um, cool. So far, so good. So now we know the first line of the reducer component. I told you <laughs> on the way I'm going to explain things. <laughs> I hope so this is 27 lines. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you, it gets easier with every line. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope you have a lot of time, you know, I have. <laughs> OK, uh, type systems, yeah, of course. Um, next thing, here, you, here is something, we, we define another type. Um, but this is something, uh, if you're coming from JavaScript, you haven't seen this. Um, except um, something like, if you're familiar with Redux, this will, you, you will see similarities. Um, because in Redux, you also have actions. Can you remember? In Redux, we have actions of, like, it's an object, and it's type, and then it's a string. Um, in Reason, um, or in computer science, there's this thing which is called tagged unions. Or in, in other languages, like Swift, you, you have it, it's called enums or Rust, but they can actually have data structures. So it's like, in computer science, enums usually don't. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird. So tagged unions are basically this data type that you can define, which is an either or, or something else, or something else. Um, let me um, demo this using um, uh, here, yeah, again, back to the REPL. Um, so here we define type answer to a question. And then we can say um, it's yes. Or no, I mean that that stuff we can do with a boolean could be true or false. But what we can do is it could be maybe as well. And now if we have like uh, let is reason great, of course. Um, is it raining? Uh, maybe. So why is this useful? Um, because what we can do now is we can use this with pattern matching. Um, let's say we define a message based on your response. Um, we have a switch expression. Um, and we say, is reason great? And then we can, um, no. Uh, then we can match all the possible results. So we say this here uh, should be to KCA. Um, this here should go to the no, should go to um, <laughs> what, nay? <laughs> Good enough. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You better keep uh, watching. Um, so, so you basically, you can take this uh, data type that we just have um, assigned to is reason great and you can um, convert it to anything else. The really good part about, um, about pattern matching is that you have, if you have multiple patterns um, and you forget one, which means not only forget, but if someone later on adds a case, um, the compiler will give you one of these warnings. It will tell you exactly like, hey, you forget, you forgot actually the case no. And this is really important because think about Redux where you have, um, you add one, um, uh, one action type and uh, suddenly like it should be covered in five different places, but you only cover it in three. Uh, and nobody ever will tell you like, hey, you missed something here. And this is exactly if you have this variance, this tag unions as a native data structure, which a compiler understands, um, you can do these things. Um, because the compiler will, will tell you exactly like, hey, something is going wrong. Yeah? And with the value of this, you would define a function now with a parameter of the type message. Yeah. Then the compiler will already do the work for you. It will fill up the compiler. So you made the example here with a uh, with variable. Yeah. Answer. 
Ah, yeah, that could be. And yeah, yeah. I mean, what? Yeah, could be. Not sure. Yeah, I, I think I know what you mean. Should I type that out now? No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cool. Um, one more thing, though, because I mentioned it before, um, like doing something like is A, B, or C is yeah can be useful in some ways. Where it gets really interesting is if you do this. If you actually you can store data in each um, parameter, and this means you can basically build state trees. You can say like let's think about the game state. It can be either in um, in the menu, and the menu can have, for example, a record with all the data that is relevant for the menu, and then you can have a game is currently running, and all the game state that is relevant for running could be in that variant, and then you can basically, what you do is, um, when you see your, eye, your user interface, you can pattern match all the way down and build a tree. I mean, that, that's what we do with React components. But here you have like a native data structure that actually supports this, this cost really, really well. Um, so let's do this quickly. Um, so what we can do is, for example, um, um, uh, let is it, um, are you joining us? Um, and then we can say maybe, and we can actually um, depends on the weather. We can do this, and of course, when we have a switch statement, um, um, what we can do is we can, let's say, um, your reason, and then we can extract this and leverage it. So, what was the you construct the maybe exact? Uh, Say what? You switched on the wrong thing. Oh, oh yeah, true. Um, uh, dup, dup, dup. Um, are you? But that still, that that still should have. What? I, I'm confused now. Never mind. Oh yeah, it was the old type. That could be. Ooh, that's a really good one. That's tricky. Um, okay, so far so good. Um, I told you it's getting better. Well, maybe not. But now you understand what this action means. So basically, um, and that's why it's a reducer component because basically you have built in um, uh, Redux. Uh, just can you get it in? Yeah, cool. Um, you basically have Redux available um, in like a really native way supported by the language inside our four components. So let's walk through the rest of the component. Um, we do with, huh? Exactly. <laughs> um, that is easy, huh? <laughs> it's a function call. <laughs> cool. Um, so we have our counter, and then we spread it out. By the, by the way, we, we spread it out because um, we basically like component by default has all the functions defined. Um, and here we're just overwriting the ones that we need. And this is again, it's important for the type system because you need to have all the things available um, um, to actually match the this signature of a React um, component um, with this make function. So basically we spread out this component, this reducer component with all everything it has. Um, then we define an initial state. It's pretty simple, it's a function and we return our initial state. Um, and here it gets interesting because we have a reducer as part of the component. And um, the reducer accepts a function, it receives the action um, as well as the state, and then we can pattern match again on, um, no, I don't want that. Um, we can pattern match on, um, on the action. And in our case, the action only can be increment or reset. Um, it doesn't contain any data in this case, but that's fine. Um, and then what we can do is we can basically, um, based if it's increment, uh, we take the existing count and we increase it by one. If it's uh, reset, we set the count to zero. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, only 10 more lines to go. And here we have render. Um, 
which looks pretty pretty similar to what we have. Um, I didn't use this helper SDE because yeah, just wanted to keep it plain. Um, that makes this a bit long. Um, but then what's really interesting is the button. Um, and with the button, we have an on-click. We get an event, which we don't use. But um, we get self with render. And then we can basically, to the component itself, can trigger this action uh, increment. Or we can trigger the action reset. And the result is that we can increment we can reset, we can increment, we can reset. Um, any questions to this? Go ahead. So you've got the event as all of these uh, private methods with the dagging underscore? Yeah. Uh, the self doesn't have it? Doesn't have it? Well, uh, yeah, the self doesn't have it at the moment. Yeah. Because it's not unused. So the self is used. Yeah. Yeah. So So the, there's also like if you if you have for example if you have children here, and we don't use it anywhere here, the compiler will warn us. So basically that's a that's a pattern that you. So this actually has. This has me. Compiler. This has meaning. Yeah. It's not just oh yeah, exactly. So this this has meaning in the sense that like the type system basically will will like the thing is you need it because um, you, you get it and, and uh, that has to do with curring, which I don't want to go into. Um, but um, yeah, functional programming. Um, but you need to accept the parameter here. Um, it's, it's, it's mandatory. Um, so if you want to indicate that you accept the parameter, but you don't use it, you basically um, um, declare it with an underscore. And this is really, really nice because if you read um, it, like if you read this, you know exactly, oh, I get the children, they're not used, but if I want to, I could use them. So it's a, it's a bit more explicit, but on the other hand, you always see like, you know exactly what you get, and you know exactly what if it is used or not, right by looking at the uh, function declaration. So, so just like what could be a uh, convention in your code, <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It, it's not enforced in the sense because it only will give you a warning. It's not the, it doesn't give you an exception, but it's, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. Um, what we, oh, sorry? Yeah. Um, if you add some optional parameters, Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. You can. This is what I meant before. The reducer is taking the action. So the reducer is a function. Yeah. So if you would change the definition, you would not deal with this case. Yeah. You would, you from that, you would not compile. Yeah. So for example, if we, if we only set the count to, uh, to 10 all the time, then we do this here. Because we don't use state. Yeah. And uh, so this, in the end, compares to uh, JavaScript. React JavaScript that is running by the browser. Yeah. Uh, how do you control the version of React? Can I uh, fragment on this? Um, you just have a package JSON and you use React in there. Whatever React version you want to use, you, you get it in there. Um, reason React. In the same way, just, uh, yeah. Um, yes. Well, so uh, Reason React is just bindings to the real React uh, JavaScript implementation. Um, so at the moment, um, that's actually interesting because uh, Fragment was introduced with um, uh, with 16.2, but the Reason React version, uh, the one that I have in here, currently doesn't have it. Um, so what I could do is I could either fork the bindings and add this fragment in there. Um, that would work, or I just wait until. Um, so there might be a little bit of a delay. Like yeah, the exactly. Because yeah. 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 That that works as well. Yeah. So bindings. I don't want to go into bindings. Maybe a bit. Le yeah. Let's see. I think we've run out of time, but. Um, so it would be similar, like changing your own pragma if you're using. Yeah. 
it's really straightforward, yeah. yeah. But um, that's actually one of the premises um, of, of reason that like creating bindings to existing stuff is really, really easy. I actually have an example, so we're gonna go in, uh, into that in a bit. Um, uh, I mean, easy is always relative, but yeah. <laughs> um, okay, you, l let me put in comparison. You haven't tried Elm yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, like it, to, to be to be uh, to clarify, I really like Elm because like Elm is um, reason is basically the the dirty version of it. You can break out of all of the the fancy functional uh, stuff. Um, Elm is very pure, like Haskell or so. Um, but yeah, if you like. I'm sitting in the office with, with guys, they, they used Elm in production for half a year, year. Um, and they, they really loved the, the development experience and so on. And then they had to implement um, like an editor, a proper one. They didn't want to do it themselves, so they wanted to create bindings. It was a horrible experience for them because creating all the bindings in Elm, like, because Elm is so pure, it, it was, a, was hell for them. And in reason, you can, I mean, you. You're aiming for the same purity, um, but you can break out all the time. It gives you this opportunity to say like, well, screw that, that's, uh, I can break out. You, you don't want to do this, but you can. And that's why, why I'm really fond of it, because it's like, it's, yeah, it's this, um, I don't have to buy in 100%. Uh. Can you show us how to do this? In, in Reason React? Yeah. Uh, I, I will show you in a bit. Uh, yeah. Because this is what I, like, I was struggling with this a lot when I was working on the website. Because yeah. every time I wanted to pull an NPM defense, I had to type it before I even try it. And then I thought, no, I don't, I want to, I, I want to, I don't want to use it because it doesn't fit me well, so I need to, like, throw away all the typings. Uh. Yeah, we can, we can go into that. Cool. Uh, I didn't track that, but I like, do you have an experience? How, how often does Reason React gets updated? One, once a month or an hour or less? I think they made like... So, so it's not like in, uh, it's, it's below 1.0, it's in a rapid development and it breaks often? No, it's not like that. Huh? Not anymore, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah they, they, they made... I think a year ago, or half a year ago, there was like this big change where they, they completely changed the structure, how they do stuff. Um, and after, after that, it's pretty solid. And I think they are, they are really comfortable at this point with, with the API. Yeah. There were some, like, like I mean, what, what you, um, and these, these are some insights how, how they run, how they develop the whole thing is, um, Let's go into the history. So Jordan Walk is the creator of React. Um, he um, did the first React version actually in standard ML, I think, yeah. SML, yeah. Um, and then he showed it to, to his colleagues at Facebook and he was like, hey, what do you think about it? They were like, well, I think that will take off. Then he rewrote the whole thing in JavaScript. Jordan was actually part of the team. Um, and then React was pre presented as JSConf and everyone hated it. And years later, we're here and everyone loves it. Um, most of them. Um, um, some people still get treated up with HTML in our JavaScript files. Um, <laughs> and um, so Jordan was wa for a long time on the React team. And at some point, um, he's basically what his goal was to make your UI development more functional. So he was taking it from this side to like, if you see like this is all the way functional, he wanted to bring like, UI development um, in the browser to like get it more into a functional direction. And at one point he said like, okay, that's good enough. Um, let's try something else. We're actually gonna go from a functional language. And we go the other direction. And now the reason React is basically where they meet in the middle. Um, and <coughs> um, and so uh, what they're doing at, uh, at Facebook, there's also Cheng who's uh, on the messenger team. Um, and the, they rewrote uh, more than 50% of the um, messenger.com code base with Reason React. And that's how they actually um, 
move the language and, and the libraries a lot forward because they have this large code base um, using Reason React and they like in the beginning they, they made some mistakes. API design stuff like language design mistakes and so on. And now they, they're moving forward and and um, and they uh, they basically develop the, the language a lot with like this one big project and a lot of the community feedback. Um, and I mean a year ago, yes, there were so many breaking changes, but I, I feel like for now it feels pretty solid. And also when they released uh, Reason Free, the, the syntax version free, um, I think they committed to half a year of non-breaking changes. And I think they're gonna continue in that way. And also all the changes we see at this point, they're like very minor, um, yeah. Also another um, anecdote. So the, the teams are at Facebook are really working close, closely together. So when they were, for instance, redesigning the context API, which is being rolled out very soon, or which is like an alpha state or something, they wanted to make it in a way that it's statically typable because uh, the React team is also using Flow and they wanted to get some inspiration, how can we make this statically typable, blah, 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 blah. So they're really talking, they're actually sitting at the same uh, aisle, uh, table aisle, where they're like talking to each other and they're like, okay, maybe, maybe we should design it this way so it's easy to type for the reason as well. And also when you think about, if you go to the reducer coach, there's this, talk about it later, this update thing. So they already thought about the, the new scheduling. Yeah. So a lot of API design is already thinking forward and making it future-proof in a way. And also, it's a difference if you're coming from a dynamic language or if you're coming from a static language, because if you're working in a static language, you, you don't break too many things because a lot of people are relying on it, and people will notice when you break things. That's, not a that's, a that's actually an, an argument for like, I'm, I'm happy to break things more in a statically typed language because I know I will not screw up everyone. Yeah, I mean, there are upgrade paths. You can definitely, yeah. they, will, they will know. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Nick again, oh God. <laughs> there are mechanics where you can uh, schedule this. You can yeah. have uh, deprecation flags. You can get, uh, put in some deprecation messages so you can yeah. slowly transition into a new API. Yeah, I mean, this is actually kind of what the React team is currently doing. Have you seen this? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that's really good. You can use different things. Yeah. Yeah. Like, didn't took us to, you know, a lot of time to think about it. Should we change now? Should we change later? It was like, hey, just one minor. Yeah. That's cool. Cool. Um, let's move on. Um, so, you probably all know what about prop types. Well, we don't need prop types. We have a type system that's way better. Um, so here I have app free. Um, app free is just rendering a banner. Um, pretty simple. And here what I wanted to briefly demonstrate is how do I pass props through uh, one component to another. Um, yes, it looks exactly the same as like its typical JSX. Well, there, there's some minor change, uh, differences in the, the uh, JavaScript JSX that you know and uh, the recent JSX, but um, yeah, you will figure that out on the way when the compiler complains. Um, the, the props, so here I have a banner, um, and what you can do then is, we accept this um, parameter for our make function. Um, so this is how we add um, 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 a, a param, basically. Um, and then we can actually use this text here, inside it. Um, now you might wonder, like, what's that tilde here? Um, this is weird. So, um, the thing is, how do we get from, like, text, Let, let's say I could have uh, um, something um, and then something. Um, like the order here shouldn't matter because that's what we are used to from, from JSX. So how can we deal with this? Um, uh, labeled parameters. 
Um, let me quickly define a function. Let's say we say increment. Um, I mean, you notice stuff. Um, that are, um, here we have x, and then we have x plus 1. Um, and then we can say increment. Uh, cool. Um, that's a result. That's perfect. Um, so, but what we can do now is, let's say we have um, a function let name, um, which accepts um, two labeled arguments. Um, it's the first name, and this is the last um, last name. What I can do then is I can say uh, first, uh, yeah, that should be first name. Um, and then we have to do a space, um, and then last name, I think that should be fine. Yeah. So here, what we can do then is, um, we can say till the first name is Jane, um, and the last name is Doe. So we have Jane Doe. But with labeled arguments, um, or labeled parameters actually, um, we can flip it because we explicitly define the names of them. And this is exactly what uh, Reason React leverages as well. And that's why the order of passing down props doesn't matter. But because, so in, in JavaScript, we don't have this concept of label arguments, which we have in other languages. Well, you can pass in an object. <laughs> that's what. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what you can do here is you can flip the um, the arguments, um, but because they're labeled, they still uh, get applied in a proper um, order. Yes. What? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the labeled arguments have to. Yeah. So why? So in this case, you can just pass two strings without. Yeah. Even even with even if you have labeled arguments <coughs> like this, you could still I'm do. I'm trying to wrap my head Well, why we need it here? Yeah, in a, in a yeah. Oh, yeah, because you, well, you don't really, uh, in the declaration or in the? Yeah, because you can just say first name without the tilde. So how is it different from tilde? I mean, what, what the tilde does? Uh, the tilde makes sure, like, if, if I have this one here, let's say, if so I, if tilde. yeah. So here, like that, that wouldn't work anymore because it's not, it's not in this case, it's not labeled anymore. So it tells you like, hey, this, this doesn't work. You can only pass a labeled argument to a labeled parameter declaration. Okay. Yeah. So it enables the, the, the this, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, let me check if I, forgot anything? No. But that was really important to understand like why we have, um, when we declare um, the props, um, they're basically part of the function declaration then, and then we can use that stuff. Um, cool. Uh, let's go to app four. Um, yes, uh, that's app four. Uh, um, let's do app four. Um, in app four, I mean the the, the important part of app four. Uh, what I want to show you is actually um, static type system, 
I promise you it will never fail. Um, how do we actually get this done if I have a banner too that where I pass in the text and where I don't pass in the text? Um, because that would basically in React, what would it would end up with, it's undefined or null. Um, I don't even know. Is it null or undefined, the prop? Undefined, okay. Um, so, um, how do we deal with that in, um, in Reason React? Well, let's look at the banner. Um, we can mark a parameter as optional. This is a special syntax, and what it actually is using under the hood is, and now we go back to explaining the language again, um, um, the language doesn't have null. I told that before. Um, so, uh, but in some cases, like, you need a way to declare, like, I mean, if, if a user um, has the field age and the user doesn't declare his age, like, you don't want to have an empty string. You want to somehow declare, like, the user didn't provide the age. So what do you do with that? Um, and the proper way to deal with that in functional languages and also in reason is that you have something like, uh, which we call an option type. So basically, um, something can be of some value. Let's say, uh, let's say we have an age. Um, so 42. So it's actually an option of type int. We could have declared this manually, that it's an option, but it inferred it automatically. What if we have nothing? Then we say it's none. Um, boom. So an option can be of type sum or none. And sum can be really anything. Like we can pass in a list of um, strings here. <coughs> boom. Um, automatically, it becomes an option of a list of strings. It inferred all of that because it only can be like that. <coughs> uh, pretty cool. Um, so, well, yeah. So sum is just a function. Sum is not a function. Sum is a variant. We learned about variants before, which means they are either this or that. And it's actually, um, option is just a variant that is built in. And there's this contract where we agreed, like, or the, the, the standard library agreed on, like, if you want to declare something that should be something or, or not something, then use an option. And we have um, even special syntax for that, um, as we show. Because we can also type here that this is of type option and so on. But it's just a nicer way of, of saying, like, hey, this text is optional. And what happens if is, if we, let, let me actually demonstrate this um, in banner, in app three, where we have the banner, and text is not optional, but if we use, um, if we omit the text, I hope that my compiler fails. Yes, because it will tell us um, the call is missing an argument of type text. So we clearly, um, it's like usually what you, basically what we have in, with prop types where you say like is required and then somebody updates the code base and forgets to add or remove the is required and everything is completely messed up. Like here it will, the compiler will actually not compile if you mess up. And you can always be assured that things work fine and correct. Um, cool. Uh, let's add our text back, we go back to app four. And, but sometimes, yes, you need this option type and then because it's a variant, what you can then do is, like with any other variant, you can um, do, like I didn't bound it to a variable now, but we can say 42 um, and then um, um, like with any other uh, variant, we can pattern match. So we can say if case none, um, um, sadly you missed the meaning of life. And if it's sum, um, um, and then we can say an integer. Ah, yeah, sorry. Um, e, yeah, whatever. Um, string of int, um, and then we see e. Oh, 
in the REPL, you always need to, uh, semicolons are important, but especially in the REPL. Um, in, in my editor, um, I can omit the semicolon and my reformat, which is the prettier of, um, of reason, um, adds it automatically. So here I, I just remove all the semicolons. Uh, could be. I mean, you. That could be. Um, but yeah, so so the 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 thing is, we can pattern match because it's a variant, it's a construct we know, um, and now our whole code base, and that's exactly what we do here in our banner two. We basically say like. Um, that's desired behavior. If you, if the text is not provided, um, we return don't panic. If the text is provided, um, then we define our non-null text because it can't be null. <laughs> um, and the result is that we have this cool um, banner that sometimes you get a text and sometimes not. Uh, cool. Uh, let's, yeah. Uh, that none is a variable that you can match on, or like you, you have to, because it's pattern matching again, um, if you forget about this, I mean, this, if you get about this, um, you get the warning uh, that you forgot the case here, and it will tell you, hey, you messed up. Um, because it's only a warning, I mean, you could, um, um, uh, you could basically leave out that case, but I mean, if you have a warning and it tells you, hey, something is wrong, then don't be surprised if there's exceptions happening. Uh. <laughs> um, yeah. So th th that's what I meant in the beginning with, um, um, do you want our computers to analyze the code before it runs and help us and tell us what's wrong? Because that's, that's, that are static type systems and static type systems can be annoying, but with type inference, it's actually pretty cool because I'm using very little type annotations here and it all just works. Um, yeah, because, so that, that's the cool thing because I'm using here string to element um, or actually here, string to element, it can infer all the way back, the text must be a string. It can't be anything else because string to element accepts a string. And that, that's really, really advanced compiler building. Um, type inference, I love it. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's pretty cool. I mean, in this case, you could even declare the type because it helps, but yeah, it's not necessary. Um, cool, let's... Um, I think the really good part is, is like in, if, if I have this in, in Java or whatnot, it's like I, I actually have to check everything all the time. I, I usually don't because it's like yeah, I'm kind of relying it, it won't be null. I mean, nobody is going to use this function of passing in a null, it would be stupid. But um, here, actually, you can, the compiler is checking for you. Nobody is so stupid to pass in null because null doesn't exist or any other thing, or whatever, yeah. It's like, you can't even make this mistake. Yeah? yeah? I was just thinking of implications of this smart... Banking. <laughs> <laughs> banking. I hope banking should be done with something like this. <laughs> I was thinking about, like, styling and stuff like this, duplicate uh, things. Oh, yeah. That they used to generate. No, but I don't think it's going to work. What do you mean? Thing, uh, compiles or some plugin, I don't know, but the tooling 
code we have in JavaScript for right now, which is basically pretty much advanced, where yeah. you can do this many style guides and stuff based on the code, it's not going to work with this code, right? And this is something mm -hmm. that I, I just realized. I, I think how actually. How are we going to solve this? Uh, I mean, the, the tools that are in the JavaScript world might not uh, work, but I, I actually would counter that that um, with a strong type system, you can build better tools. We, yeah. we don't have them yet, some but... Some yeah. Them, so yeah, yeah, but totally. Really, so that's the reason for me that I say, okay, It's going to be you and me. <laughs> Well, uh, wait, wait, wait a second. You can easily compile, huh? Oh yeah. Uh, you mean this one? Yeah, no. Let, let's do the banner. That's probably the easiest one. Um, see here. Yeah. But. So um, uh, I can go a bit deep because of card blanche, I can go deep in here. Um, so every tool out there, as far as I know, um, that is analyzing prop types or flow or TypeScript, I think they only do flow or type, uh, TypeScript, I don't know. Um, but it's called um, React Docchang. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, and this tool can understand flow types. So what we can do, what Jordan Walk is currently working on, is to generate flow types based out of um, reason types. So basically, once he has that up and running, we can generate the flow types um, for each component, and then you have, um, with Dockchain, you can use style this again. Cool. So it's, it's gonna work? Yeah, I think so. I mean, because Yeah, the, yeah. yeah. That, that's my number one question to Jordan, yeah. That, that I don't know. Yeah. Not, not yet. We, we, we all haven't seen the interop player. So, yeah. so he, he clearly is doing some progress, but I'm just wondering how, how it's going to look like. Yeah. If it's going to look like generated by a computer thing, yeah. which is not visible in, you know, for humans, then no, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think he's, f I mean, this guy is putting a lot of thought into making development experience better, so I hope he's not, he's coming up with something good. But yeah, let's see. Um, cool, let's, yeah? No, oh, go ahead. Um, you mean uh, uh, in the banner too, right? Yeah. This here? This can be anything. Because in, in a variant, um, I mean, what, you, what I probably mostly would do is I would put a record in a variant, but you can do, um, like, I mean, for some, it's always going to be the first value, anything, yeah of type anything so it can be any you can take any it's this basically is, is a let binding inside the the declaration that you can use it in the scope afterwards yeah yeah exactly yeah so basically whatever comes in a switch then you this is this is what pattern matching is about it's not it's about matching what what you we, we could even do this here this is quite interesting because we could say if it's 42 exactly, then we want to do um, string to element. Uh, cool. So pattern matching, I, I, yeah, I didn't even show you much of it yet, but you could even do this if it's 42 and 43. Oh, 44. Um, because it's matching, it, it's actually, 
actually, I'm not sure if it if the first one runs, but I I think like my my current suspicion would be like because this is a um, more exact match that this was run. L let's try. Um, so if we have um, banner four, was this? Um, uh, wait a second. But ah, sorry, this is actually this will not work. So we have to make. Let's say we do forty-two because it, it would be a type. It probably showed me um, inside there. Yeah, this is not working. So here, uh, warning. Um, is unused, but what does it? Ah, okay. So the compiler is again smart enough to actually tell us, hey, this doesn't match, and if we have this now, then it will work. Love it. It's better than I thought. <laughs> um, cool. Let's wrap up. Um, let's do the last one, um, which is. Uh, I'm not gonna go crazy about it, but um, ah, shit, it's, it's actually good. Um, let's say you wanna use an existing React component yeah, that is written in JavaScript because all of our code bases run currently are JavaScript. So we can do this as well. Um, with BuckleScript, we can do bindings. I sh like syntax is easy. Andre is not here anymore, so we can say that. <laughs> um, it, yeah, it, I mean, you have to get into it one time, really dig deep, understand what's going on, and then you, you, you get comfortable with it. I, I'm not comfortable with it yet. I, I still have to go through all of that. But basically what we can do is um, there's this UI library called Rebus. Um, it's on NPM. It has a bunch of React components. Here we have the arrow component. It accepts one um, pair of prop which is direction should be of string. Um, let's get this into our um, reason code. So we simply have it in package JSON. My God, my auto completion doesn't work anymore. Um, so I installed Rebus. Um, that's pretty cool. And then I can basically make an arrow, uh, uh, make a binding for this arrow component. Um, it's in the rebus module. We can say, I want to get uh, out the React class arrow um, and bind it to my JS arrow. Um, and then I can simply use a function that is coming with wrap JS for a uh, reason. I pass in the React um, class, which is my JS error. I um, define which are the properties properties is direction and basically map directly. And this is also really important because if you screw up here, um, I mean, or there's, there's things where type, the type system can go wrong. Because if you say direction should be of type integer, but the React component under the hood expects a string, then like this is exactly where you screw up. And this is exactly where, um, where I wanted to show Andre. Like, you can do anything here. You could basically create a, a single component case where you do whatever mapping, however you want to like. Um, and it could be completely bogus. Um, but yeah, that, that's a workaround that you can do. Um, and then you have the children. And what you can then do is, so basically, it's just a make function. Um, and it returns a component. And then in app, we can use this arrow. Um, direction is a string. So here we again have complete type safety. Um, and then we can use this. And in our application, we should see an arrow. And ta -da. Um, let's see if this, I, I, I didn't try that before, but I hope, I hope that, oh, voila, pretty good. Um, Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there, there, there you got me. Uh, making impossible states impossible. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we could do a variant that is up and down. And then we could simply use, um, we can map this directly to strings. And then our API would be even more type safe than the rebus original API. That's pretty cool. Um, cool. Um, reason to the rescue. Um, and 
Of course, you can do it the other way around. You can also um, uh, export a Reason React component to be used as a normal uh, React component. Um, and this way, you can basically wrap um, either way and um, have complete flexible uh, code base where Reason React components are in the middle of it and just where you need them and you build up um, continuously. Um, but you also can start fresh and build in Reason because we all love it. <laughs> um, and yeah, um, that's the end. Thank you very much for listening. I hope this was helpful. <laughs>